In the very first lecture of this course, we learned that we use Angular for creating dynamic and interactive client-side applications by using HTML, CSS, and a client-side programming language like TypeScript or JavaScript. Now, most of the time, when we create an application using Angular, we use TypeScript as the programming language. TypeScript is a fairly new programming language, which is very similar to JavaScript. So, in this lecture, let's understand what TypeScript is and do you really need to learn TypeScript first in order to learn Angular? TypeScript is a free and open source programming language developed by Microsoft. And you can say that it is a superset of JavaScript. That means any valid JavaScript code is also a valid TypeScript code. So if you write a valid JavaScript code in a TypeScript file, that JavaScript code will be compiled by the TypeScript compiler. So remember that any valid JavaScript code is also a TypeScript code. Now here you might ask, Okay, we are going to use TypeScript in Angular to create a client-side application. But do browsers actually understand TypeScript? Will the browser be able to execute the TypeScript code? Well, no. Browsers do not understand TypeScript. But very important point to note here is that when we compile our TypeScript code, that TypeScript code gets converted into JavaScript code. Okay, so we are going to write our code in TypeScript, but when that TypeScript code will be compiled, it will be converted to JavaScript. And that compiled JavaScript can be executed by the browsers. Now you might have another question. So why TypeScript? Why cannot we directly use JavaScript? Well, there are several advantages of using TypeScript over JavaScript. First of all, as I mentioned, TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. That simply means that any valid JavaScript code is also a TypeScript code. But TypeScript has additional features which do not exist in the current version of JavaScript supported by most browsers available out there. For example, TypeScript is strongly typed, but JavaScript is not strongly typed. It is dynamically typed. In JavaScript, when we create a variable and when we assign a value to that variable, we do not specify the data type for that variable explicitly. The data type of that variable is calculated based on the value we are storing in it. For example, here in the name variable, when we are storing this value John, the data type of this name variable will be string. In the same way, to this age variable, when we are assigning it a value 28, this 28 is a number, so the data type of this age variable will be number. In the same way, to this is married variable, we are assigning a Boolean value. So the data type of this is married will be Boolean. So based on the value which we are assigning to the variable, the variable's data type will be set. And that's why we say that JavaScript is dynamically typed. There, the data type is calculated based on the value which is stored in the variable. But TypeScript is strongly typed because in TypeScript, we can explicitly specify what type of data we want to store in a variable. For example, here, for the name variable, we are specifying the data type as string. So in this name variable, we can only store string values. If we try to store a number value in this name variable, it will throw an error. But that is not the case in case of JavaScript. So in case of JavaScript, to this name variable, I'm assigning this string value. Later, I can also assign a numeric value to this name variable. And it is not going to complain. Okay, so that's why TypeScript is strongly typed because there, whatever data type we specify, only that type of data we can store in the variable. But JavaScript is not strongly typed. It is dynamically typed. In a variable, we can store a value of any data type. And since TypeScript is strongly typed, because of this, it helps us avoid many bugs in our application, which can be introduced due to dynamically typing. Now, you also need to remember here that in TypeScript, specifying the variable type is optional. It is not mandatory. For example, here we are explicitly specifying the data type for this name variable as string. But this is optional. This is not mandatory. If I don't specify the data type here for this name variable, just like JavaScript, we can also store any type of value in this name variable. But if we explicitly specify the data type for a variable, this feature makes our application more predictable and it also makes it easier to debug them when something goes wrong. TypeScript also has quite a few object oriented features, which we do not have in JavaScript, like interfaces, access modifiers, fields, properties, generics, etc. These features are not available in the current version of JavaScript, but they might be introduced in the future versions of JavaScript. Another benefit of using TypeScript is that we can catch errors at compile time instead of at runtime. So when compiling the TypeScript code, 
So basically, there is a compilation step involved. And during the compilation, we can catch these errors and fix them before deploying it in the production. So TypeScript is a beautiful programming language and it is basically a superset of JavaScript. Any valid JavaScript code is also a valid TypeScript code. If you know JavaScript, then you already know most of the TypeScript concepts. That's why in this course, I will not talk about TypeScript specifically. If you know JavaScript, then you are good to take this course. The rest of the features of TypeScript, which is not available in the current version of JavaScript, you will learn about it as you move along with this course. Now, I'm not going to talk about TypeScript specifically in this course, but parallelly, I am going to create a new course for TypeScript and there I will keep on uploading TypeScript related topics. So along with learning Angular from this course, you can also learn TypeScript parallelly from that TypeScript course. And in that TypeScript course, I'm going to cover everything from scratch to advanced level. But in this Angular course, since I don't want to make it too lengthy, I will not cover the TypeScript topics. Whenever required, I will explain some of the features of TypeScript, but I'm not going to cover TypeScript as a section in this course. For that, I'm going to create a separate course and you can watch that course in order to learn TypeScript. All right, so this was a very brief introduction of what is TypeScript. Now in the next lecture, let's go ahead and let's learn about component and let's go ahead and let's create a new component for our Angular application. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.